Hello viewers, how are you? Hope so you are fine and you are watching Ali Maths online with Ali Mausam. And here I have discussed uh, the series lecture on the fractional calculus. In the previous lecture, I have described the formula which is the power rule to find the derivative of the polynomial or a constant function. And we see that this is not quite uh, appreciative to find the fractional or derivative of a function. So, in this lecture, I have used an other kind of the fractional or derivative, which is a, a Grunwald technique of fractional derivative. And let's see, have a look on this formula. That's either it is useful or not for us. Okay, to find the formula of the Grunwald fractional or derivative, we will use the definition of ordinary derivative, which have read in the classical calculus. Uh, to elaborate that definition, we will use the graphical explanation of a function. Uh, let me have a function f of t which is described on t minus h and t with the interval. Uh, the result at t minus h is f of t minus h and the result at t is f of t. As we know that the derivative of a function basically defined as the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line basically is the ratio of the, uh, we can say that is the ratio of the uh, perpendicular and the base. Okay, so we have uh, using these kind of uh, derivative definition of this definition uh, definition of this kind of derivative we have a prime of t is given as a limit h approaches to zero f of t minus f of t minus h over h okay so by using this definition if we find the second order derivative of the f of t then we can write it as a f second prime of uh, t limit h approaches to zero uh, f prime of t minus f prime of t minus h over h okay by using this definition, we will plug this value in this function. That's an f prime of t. So the value of f prime of t, which is given as, will substitute in that place. Okay. So we have f of t minus f of t minus h over h. That's the value of f prime of t. And as we seen that f prime of t minus h is also here. So we will replace this t by t minus h then we will find the value of, uh, to get the value of f prime of t minus h so we have replaced t by t minus h in this definition the, uh, the definition of derivative so f prime of t uh, can be written as f of t minus h minus f of t minus 2h over h and h so the definition is here okay by using the property of the LCM so we will find the LCM of uh, both of them uh, so we have the results as given below f of t minus f uh, 2f t minus h plus f of t minus 2h over h square okay if we take it common as uh, 1 over h square uh, so we can write it as f of t minus 2 into f of t minus h plus f of uh, t minus 2h so here's a pattern we can see here uh, the first term is positive second is a negative and third is also positive so we can see that uh, here's the uh, sign is the ordinative order so first it is a positive, then second is negative, and third is also positive. If the fourth term is this, then it might be negative. Okay. So we can also see that uh, the pattern which is uh, in front of us is a uh, binomial pattern. So uh, by using this pattern, we can find the third order derivative, fourth order derivative, and so on, uh, and third order derivative of the function. So similarly, for the third order derivative, we have f triple prime of t. The limit h approaches zero, same as it. If uh, is h is uh, h is power is two, because it has a second derivative. So for the uh, third derivative, and the power of h will be three. And the f of t with the positive term, then the next term will be negative. So it is a minus three f of t minus h. And the next term is also positive because the previous term is negative. So the plus three of f of t minus two h. And the next term will be negative. So minus f of t minus three h. So if we can, uh, if we see these pattern, uh, so we can uh, it converts into the series form. So we will use a series form uh, to elaborate this z. So we can write the series of this pattern is here. Okay, this is that. Uh, what we can see that the f one over h cube is same as it, and the series is started from zero to three. Uh, with three is the order of the derivative. If there is uh, four, then will be there is will be four. If the nth order derivative, then here's will be. And okay, minus h power i minus h power i i i will basically indicate the number number of series and minus one minus one. We have used this minus one uh, to elaborate the alternating signs that we seen here. Okay, 
So f of t minus i of h. If I plug uh, i is equal to zero in this uh, result, uh, so we will get f of t as uh, minus one raised to the power zero will be one. So this will vanish, and uh, the combination of three into i is three of zero is one. Also one. So this is one, and f of t minus i is, uh, i value will be zero. So this will be vanished, and f of t will be remains here. So first term is f of t. If we plug uh, i is equal to one, so minus one raised to the power one, and the combination three one is also three. So minus one raised to the power one gives the minus z, and the combination three one will give the z three, and i value will be one. So will provide us t minus h, and then I will put uh, i is equal to two. When i is equal to, we'll plug here. Then the minus one raised to the power two, which is a positive term, so the z will be positive, and the combination three two uh, will be three. And f of t minus i, i is the value of what the value of i is two. So we we'll plug value two here, and uh, then we we'll get f of t minus two h. Okay. Next, uh, we we'll do the last terms, which i is equal to three. If we put i is equal to three minus one raised to the power three, which is a odd number, the z will be negative. That will help. Okay. And the combination three and three is one. So no need to write the number here. And the i is equal to three. So t minus three h. It means this series is truly uh, elaborate all of these uh, pattern which you mentioned here. Okay. Let me explain this uh, formula of third derivative of f of t. We extend it to the nth derivative uh, where n is the positive integer. Okay. So basically, that's the ordinary derivative. Okay. Uh, so limit h equals to zero. Uh, same as it. Uh, one over h to the power n and the summation from starting from zero to n as uh, uh, And is the order of the derivative. Okay, minus one is power i, same ordinary terms and combination, and f of t minus i of h. Okay, as we are talking about fractional order derivative, so we have no concern with the ordinary order derivative of a function. So we want to find the derivative of a function at the Arbitrary order. This one will be one over two. The fractional order derivative, which means fractional form, and maybe pi form, and other complex numbers. So here we choose an arbitrary number which belongs to a real number. Uh, there's maybe uh, in the fractional form are maybe pi and the uh, square root of the prime numbers. Okay. To get the z's, uh, we will replace n by alpha. Alpha is the arbitrary number which is real number. Okay. The z will be here. That f raised to alpha of t means there's a Alpha or derivative of function f of t. So one over h is by alpha. As we replace n by h, then here there is no need to replace n by alpha because the series is not defined on the ordinary numbers. Uh, it's uh, it defines on natural numbers. So we will not put uh, uh, alpha here. Okay. So minus one is power i same as it and c is power i and n is replaced by alpha. Because we are turning uh, towards the arbitrary order derivative and f of t minus i of h. Here's the problem. Problem is that if we define the combination of a function, uh, that's in the form of a factorial. So that's alpha of factorial into i of factorial alpha minus i into factorial. As uh, I have described before, that alpha is an arbitrary number. So the factorial of the arbitrary number doesn't exist. As I mentioned in the previous lecture, that alpha factorial doesn't exist, so we need to find some other way. The so some other way is Euler. Euler describes the gamma function. Uh, the property of the gamma function is described here is that uh, gamma of n plus one will be equal to n factorial. So we will convert our function from factorial to a gamma function, which is a generalized form of the factorial function. Uh, this may be helpful for us. Okay. Uh, the value by plugging the value of uh, alpha factorial will be uh, gamma of alpha plus one, and the i factorial. There is no need to plug i into the gamma function because i is a natural number, a uh, positive integer. Okay, and alpha minus i plus one same as by the definition is the gamma of alpha minus i plus one. Okay, plug this value of combination uh, alpha of i uh, into the above function here. Okay. By substituting this value here, uh, we will get the results as uh, sorry. Here will be the limit exist. Uh, the limit will be uh, limit h approaches to zero one over h raised to power alpha. Okay, uh, the number uh, of the, the value of the combination is plugged here. This so result will be here. Okay, as we see, uh, if we put the substitution, if we make a substitution that uh, n is equal to t minus a over a. 
then we have h will be equal to t minus a over uh, n and 1 over h will be equal to n over t minus a as we see here as h approaches to 0 as uh, we have limit h approaches to 0 if we plug that h approaches to 0 then the n will be approaches to infinity then the thin terms will be converges to infinity we will diverge to infinity uh, for all values that should be a is less than t for all terms in which a is less than t uh, the n will be con uh, approaches to infinity okay so we'll uh, plug these substitutions in the previous result that will be here uh, we have a new values like f of, of t is limit and approaches to infinity uh, we replace uh, 1 over h 1 over h by n over t minus a the value will be n over alpha over t minus a raised to the power alpha okay and the solution is same as it uh, defined below okay minus 1 to power i and the uh, gamma function is also described same as it and the uh, nominator is also same as it f of t t minus as i is same as it and we plug the value of h here the value of h is t minus a over n which is here okay this is the result of the Grunwald fraction derivative okay this is the Grunwald fraction derivative expression and uh, describes the fraction derivative of a Grunwald type okay what is the deficiency of this formula? Okay, uh, I said that uh, it is not useful for us because uh, here's the a term this n approaches to infinity. So uh, to find the derivative of any kind of function, uh, we must have to provide that uh, the function will be exist on the limit n approaches to infinity, which is uh, quite difficult for some kind of functions to uh, to get the results and the resistance at the n approaches to infinity. So uh, it means that we have to look forward for some kind of other uh, changing in the Grunwald uh, Letnikov formula uh, to elaborate some other results to find the fractional derivative of the uh, functions. So in the last lecture we will discuss about uh, some uh, other changing in this formula and we will get uh, some other results which may be helpful for us and so keep watching. And